Guys, a moment like this only comes around about once every 10 years. Behind me are several examples of the all new 2019 Ram 1500 pickup truck. And there's so much to talk about because it's an all new truck from the frame up. So get a comfortable chair, get your favorite drink. We're gonna be here a while because this is everything you ever wanted to know about the all new Ram. Rem decided to use hammers, different versions of them, for inspiration for the interior design and overall theme of the truck. <laughs> I love this, that they actually used real hammers and designed the interior with that same feeling in mind. Let me have the interior designer walk you through all the different grades. The truck is so unique with, with the range that really this truck can, can go from. So you got tradesmen standing in front of tradesmen here all the way up to our limited. And so early in the process, we wanted to really get everyone that was working on the truck um, sort of into the, I guess, the mindset of each of the customers. And for, for us, it was like, let's, let's look at some things and, and hammers started to come out because there's, so, there's such a vast difference in hammers, right? So you got the sledgehammer that for us represents tradesmen. It's all about a working level truck, right? So when you look at, you know, what's in the tradesman here, um, it's standard with vinyl, you got optional cloth, but we really looked at the interior just in the layout of storage and function. That's kind of one of the keys for the interior, um, is just making sure that this truck looks great, but performs you know, well as a pickup truck. So really, really durable surfaces. Um, so you see things with the paint, actually it's got like a texture to it, it's got like a grit to it. So it looks like it can actually kind of take abuse, you know, like that sledgehammer. It's got that feel to it, right? So um, the next level in the lineup is our Bighorn uh, trim level. That's really, you know, it's a heart of the market. It's probably, you know, close to 40% of our pickup truck sales, you know, on today's pickup truck. And so we really wanted to make sure there was a range here, right? So for us, it's, it's a family um, oriented, maybe also slightly work oriented. So it's got to pick up a wide range. You can see we, we kind of picked a hammer that, you know, looked, looked nice, um, very functional, maybe more of a traditional looking hammer. But you notice some of these things where um, you got this casting appearance, but then you got this brushed feel. And we actually did that on some of the parts and pieces. So the actual tops of the metal actually is clean and polished, and then the sides kind of have this casted feel to it. So it's kind of neat to see, you know, sort of that relationship and actually play through to the final product. We have um, four interior color options for this pickup truck. Um, that included uh, three of them that you can see here. And so again, that kind of helps to make sure the range of this big horn is there so that really there's something kind of for everyone. Cloth seats. Um, our standard, we have a range of uh, screens of our Uconnect system. So we start off with a 5 inch radio, we jump up to an 8.4 inch radio, and then we jump up to an 8.4 inch navigation radio. So again, a wide range of, uh, of options for the truck. Yes, Rebel. I would say it's one of my favorites too. What is this? Holy, look at that. This is a pretty, yes, it was a pretty special, uh, pretty special hammer, very functional, but also from um, aesthetics, just even some of the colors. We were, you know, we were kind of, uh, we have Rebel in today's pickup truck, and we really wanted to kind of expound upon that. So some pretty cool stuff happening with Rebel. Um, probably one of my favorite uses of our, of our metal, of our colored chrome that we did. We actually um, have on the tops of the surfaces actually like a, a machined finish. So you can actually see like a cutter pass, like if actually a tool was creating this part by hand, you kind of see some of those intricacies. And that's throughout all of the metal work on the interior, so it's pretty cool. 
Again, you know, you have that dose of color, so you got that anodized red, so that's a pretty cool finish. On the seats, we have um, our tire tread pattern, so our Goodyear tire tr tires that you see on the exterior of the, of the truck, coupled with the two-tone seats, it's a pretty, uh, pretty sharp looking interior. Laramie, so the Laramie and Bighorn are really sort of brothers in that sense. Um, they're, this again, pretty, pretty high take rate in terms of our truck, but a really cool, I think, hammer that's functional but aesthetically driven as well. You know, pretty, pretty nice in its, in its tones. We, uh, we picked some of the colors, you know, to try to go with some of the colors of the interior. This is showing our brown interior color scheme. We also have an all black interior version of the Laramie. Um, so we really wanted to make this feel almost like today's Longhorn Limited in terms of the amount of stuff we've added. So we've, we have suedes, we have this cool herringbone perf, so it kind of looks like a really uh, sort of high-end piece, uh, piece of fabric. And um, overall, you should get a pretty cool feel to it. It's got a little bit of a brighter metallic uh, finish to some of the metals and some of the finishes. So these, um, both Longhorn Limited, it's our highest um, trim levels. It's, you know, it's, it's large in stature, right? We really wanted to have something that, was, uh, that felt appropriate for a truck. And you can really see the play off of the casted and then this polished finish to it. And even this um, sort of knurling, we actually see that pop into the interior in some of the places, like all the little areas where the buttons and the controls are, some of that knurling pops into the interior. This picture here shows off our indigo blue and frost interior. And we have, of course, an all black uh, interior version. Something really cool to point out here is our 19 speaker Harman Kardon system. Comes with these awesome stainless steel grills all the way throughout the interior, including even the overhead speaker systems. Uh, and then this, like I mentioned, this is our indigo and frost interior. So it gives you a little bit of a light feel. So. Uh, you know, that you're not, if someone wants the opposite of what our all black interior is, you can feel, you can feel pretty light in this color. It's got, uh, you can see on the image, you know, almost everything turns red. It's a little bit more softer everywhere. Um, really large dose of leathers and woods. Kind of the Longhorn. The longhorn, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit um, more, I would say, have an, it has an artistry to it. You know, a little bit more of a crafted um, look, and that's really what we wanted to put on the interior. So in front of us here, this is our new 12-inch uh, Uconnect uh, system that's uh, our class exclusive feature and brand new for the pickup truck. Uh, you can see it's, um, it really fits well, I think, with the interior. Um, you know, we have a lot of these redundant controls all um, spread out the, uh, to sort of make sure that, you know, we got a great screen here, but the ability to kind of find something fast um, sometimes, you know, we, we see that that's important. We also, below the screen, have our uh, auxiliary functional bank. So you have our air suspension, our ESC tow haul, and our front and rear park assist, as well as our integrated trailer brake control. So all of those elements are kind of confined. And this is the limited grade we're sitting in. This is the limited. Our 12-inch uh, radio is available on our Laramie and Longhorn models, and it's basically standard on our limited uh, trim level. And so when someone gets into the truck for the first time, um, you're going you're gonna to see this pop up. Basically, this is what's called our home screen. And this allows you to pick kind of what you want to see sort of at your touch of your fingertips. Maybe when you're anywhere throughout the system, you can always get back to this home state. So I'll put uh, music up here. I'll put comfort down here. And basically what happens is any point in time you're in the system, you can always hit this button in the top left. That'll pop these screens up. And then you can also go through and actually flip you know, the state of those systems. And at any point in time, you can shut them down and it'll give you the rest of the stuff that you can then choose from, which is, which is awesome. But besides that, the system basically is, is two 8.4 inch screens on top of each other. That's kind of the size of the system. I know everyone that has an FCA product um, is very familiar with our 8.4 inch system. So that's kind of gives you a sense of space. Any one of the controls then could also go to full screen. 
So we now have our media screen popped up. This is our picture-in-picture -picture view of the map. And then allows you to have all of your access for um, your, uh, basically your ports. The truck now comes uh, available with three fully functional USBs. So any three people within the truck can have their phone actually plugged in. And it, it sure. So as we started to, to look at the new Ram truck, you know, some of the things we were trying to consider in our design phases is we wanted to maintain all the power and durability and efficiency of the vehicle. We wanted to bring new technology to the vehicle as well to help with efficiency. So what we have now is our new system. It's our newest uh, addition to our hybrid family. And this is, a, this is on the Hemi engine. It's also on the Pentastar engine. It's our new e-torque systems here in the front. Yeah, and if I could come it. around here. So our e-torque system is mounted on the front accessory drive. And on the, on the Hemi engines, it provides 130 foot-pounds of torque. It's 90 foot-pounds of torque on the V6. Uh, this is used to start and stop the engines, uh, tr like a traditional starter-based systems, but it does it very seamlessly. It's under, under 400 milliseconds to start an engine. So it's very, very fast, under 4 tenths of a second to start it. It also, um, as we start the engine, it also controls the stop of the engine. We also use it for brake recuperation is what we use. So as the vehicle's slowing down, we take some of the brake energy and it's absorbed by the MGU to help charge our 48 volt battery, which is here in the front of the system here. Okay, and mm -hmm. the battery is hiding in the back of the cab? Is that right? Battery is hidden in the back of the cab, so it's against the rear wall of the cab as we do that. So. Okay, mm -hmm. so you said 130 pounds mm -hmm. of torque yes. additional, but how does that work? That's not really additional at the top end, right? No, it's not. So what we have is we have 130 pound feet of torque available uh, to run the systems. So we use that, to, as I said, to seamlessly you start and stop the engine, uh, gives us a really smooth transitions. Also with the system we use that as we do different transitions with the vehicle. Um, so we use that as we change from four cylinder to eight cylinder mode, we help smooth those transitions. And then also as we're driving the vehicle, it's paired with our upgraded eight speed transmissions, which have several uh, shift schedules we can use. So we also use it to augment some of the power of the engine slightly. So instead of rather changing gears and so forth as we do that, we can use the uh, system to boost in certain areas to, to help augment the shift schedules. So let's say I'm at the drag strip mm -hmm. in a Hemi mm -hmm. and I put my foot all the way down. Mm -hmm. So what happens? So I get a little bit of boost off the line and then what mm -hmm. happens? So what would happen with this is we would start the engine with it very quickly. As I said, under four tenths of a second, the engine will be up and running and we'll continue to boost as the engine comes up on power. As soon as the engine power exceeds us, the engine will take over and continue to run full performance of the engine. Okay, and mm -hmm. what is the horsepower and the torque numbers on the uh, That one, <laughs> you got to okay. look up, so, sorry. I'll, I'll get it okay. later. Yeah, I'll get that one later, so, sorry. Okay. All right. So, the, uh, the mm -hmm. traditional, what people would call traditional starter is mm -hmm. gone. It's right? traditional starter is gone from a starter-based system, as you would look at today, from start-stop systems. We do have a traditional starter attached to the engine for very cold uh, climates and certain areas where the belt um, would, would want to make sure we have capacity, or for icing of the belt, so we still retain the starter on the system, but it's not a traditional starter as you would with traditional start-stop systems today. It's just back to a basic starter motor. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. um, and how does it work? You mentioned the uh, cylinder deactivation. Yes. So, is it true to say that the e-torque system kind of aids under light loads? It, it does. Yeah. So, what, what the e-torque system does is it's got a, a fairly sophisticated control system in it, so it's always looking for the most efficient way to run the powertrain. Uh, so it'll, it'll help the powertrain make decisions whether to run in four-cylinder mode, eight-cylinder mode, and which gear selection to use. Uh, traditionally, when you'd see normal vehicles on the road, when we shift from four-cylinder to eight-cylinder, you notice some of the transitions that's going on. We use the e-torque system to smooth those transitions out so you driving the vehicle don't notice those transitions. Also in four-cylinder mode, many times when you want to tip into the vehicle to accelerate, we, we have just a little bit more power than we need in the four-cylinder mode, so we always shift back to eight-cylinder. That's where we use the additional torque from the e-torque system today, so we'll use that to augment that so we can stay in four-cylinder mode longer. By staying in four-cylinder mode longer, obviously we get more efficiency and better fuel economy for the vehicle.
So as we look at our transmission, um, this is our, our next generation 8-speed transmission. We have both a heavy duty and a light duty version depending on which engine and which package you get in the vehicle. We've made some efficiency improvements in the gear train and the transmission to help with fuel economy. And then we've also um, done quite a bit with the various shift schedules of the transmissions and automated shift schedules. So we have I think over 40 different shift schedules that you can choose from and those work in, in concert with the e-torque system today. So depending on what the vehicle's uh, desire is, uh, the e-torque system can ask for different shift schedules, different shift patterns and that allows the, the vehicle to, to match the performance of the, the operator of the vehicle and maximize our fuel economy. Also, the system will also recognize if we're doing certain attributes like towing or going up hills or downgrades, and it'll, it'll also select different shift schedules that way. Like grade uh, braking? Grade braking, those types of things. It'll automatically do that for the, for the operator of the vehicle. So how many features on the transmission can the driver control or the yeah. other shift schedules yeah. kind of hidden from the driver? Uh, so, so some of the shift schedules are hidden from the driver's view. It allows the e-torque system to automatically do that without the driver intervention. But we certainly have the, the traditional buttons in the vehicle. So you can push tow haul, you have different driver selective modes that we can do those. Same with the great downgrade braking, the driver can select those as well. Ah, this is a really good start to the 2018 Detroit Auto Show. And I'm actually in the back seat of the new Ram 1500. And the most amazing part of this is how much room there is. I'm actually reclined. This seat does recline. And I'm just over 6'2". And I can go like this and actually be very comfortable in the back here. Ram is also offering rear cooled seats. And um, they stretch the truck about 4 inches for the crew cab. And about 2 inches of that is actually here in this area. It's very usable. So the crew grow, grew four inches, okay, but in the process of, of growing it, we also took weight out. We've approximately taken 100 pounds out of the frame, as well as 100 pounds out of the body structure. Uh, net, we're about 225 pounds uh, lighter than, than the current Ram 1500. Uh, payload and towing, uh, with this vehicle, our, uh, our towing uh, number is, is 12,750 pounds and our payload number, max payload number, is 2,300 pounds. And how, were you, how did you arrive at those numbers? Did you want it to go higher, over 13,000 towing, or how did you arrive at this kind of capability? Uh, we looked at it as, as, a, as competitive numbers. Uh, you know, with the light duty customer, um, they're typically not po you know, towing. I mentioned 12,750 pounds. The, the light duty customer you know, isn't there for the most part. You know, they're, they're towing their trailers or, you know, smaller boats and so forth like that. So, you know, we focused really on who, who the customer was. And we thought, you know, with both payload and towing, you know, let's, let's put ourselves in a real competitive uh, position. And that's what we've done right here. Here's an interesting part about the design of the truck. It has a different look for the most luxurious version. This is a limited edition versus, for example, the Tradesman or even the Rebel, different grille designs and different headlight designs as well. Let me have the exterior designer walk you through it. Well, uh, it's, it's all new from the ground up, from front to rear, inside and out. We, um, it's a proportion statement. The, uh, the, big, the big news here is the bigger cab for the crew cab. It's four inches longer, uh, which uh, spills over into the overall length of the truck for a crew cab with a 5.7. It's uh, four inches longer wheelbase, four inches longer overall, four inch longer cabin. Um, as you can see with our truck right here, and it's hard to ignore this, this is the Rebel, the all new Rebel. Um, a lot of the DNA of today's truck, um, still going with a no crosshair theme for Ram. In fact, all of our trucks for this new 1500 don't have crosshairs, so that's kind of a new thing. It's also about an inch lower overall. Can we look at the side of it? Absolutely, absolutely. So it's about an inch lower overall, and we did that with the, the tire, not specifically to this Rebel, but uh, we did that specifically with the uh, overall uh, diameter of the tire and the overall height of the truck. Um, what's new for the Rebel also is it's now available uh, in a quad cab. So, uh, and that's what you see right here. And the quad cab is all new too. Still have the two-tone paint, um, the aggressive tire, uh, the truck will also be available in, uh, not only with the air suspension, but also the steel suspension. Rebel, as you know, it's, it's an off-road truck. It's aggressively styled. You can see from the side view here of the hood, the vented hood. That's all new, and that's specific to the Rebel. Uh, 360 DLO graphic, 
uh, it's pretty special, it's pretty neat. Um, there's even some uh, DNA into the design that we did here, going back to the uh, original BR Ram truck from the 90s with the three-sided wheel opening here. That design had a very, very aggressive, almost a box shape. Right. And the pontoon fenders, the A-line, this is a device that we've used to kind of tie everything together. Uh, the engine box, the cab, the uh, cargo box does a nice job of pulling, uh, pulling these elements all together. You know, you get to the rear end of the truck and sometimes, um, you know, it's, let's be honest, it's the business end of the truck uh, from the standpoint of the tailgate and access to the bed. The bed is about an inch and a half to two inches higher than today's. And that was done strictly for aero. Aero was very important on this. In fact, we were able to achieve a .357 aero number uh, with a lot of little tricks and a deployable front spoiler, but raising the top of the bed. So what does that do? It also helps the customer because you have more capacity to the bed. Getting to the rear, all new. Um, we, the tailgate is now dampened, so it's uh, a lot easier to open and close. Um, the trans I call this transparent technology with the use of the camera and the sensors. A lot of people, including our current truck, put sensors in the bumpers. Mm -hmm. We decided to put them in these moldings down below to kind of clean up the uh, <clears throat> appearance. I call this uh, the two-step bumper. So we I like the we texture here. Too. Yeah, this and and we've used that consistently throughout other areas of the vehicle, running boards, etc. But by having this top surface lower, it makes it access easier to the bed when the tailgate is up instead of having to reach all the way up to that. Um, Four and a half inch tips. Today's truck is four. These are four and a half, and these are black. Uh, once again, real steel. It's powder coated to match the front. Uh, premium tail lamps with the uh, blind spot monitoring system. You know, a smooth body side, minimal gap here is very helpful. And while it's not just uh, shown on this truck, we have a deployable front spoiler. So at 35 miles an hour, um, it actually drops down. And, uh, at, and then uh, at park, obviously, it retracts. That's kind of a really unique feature because I was thinking to myself a couple of years ago, you know, fancy sports cars have active aerodynamics. Exactly. Why don't trucks? Well, now we do. This is my favorite version of the new Ram. This is the Rebel. And the big news about the Rebel is it's now available in two cab configurations, quad cab, extended cab, or a full crew cab also has two suspension options, the air suspension that was there before, and also a steel coil suspension, that's, so that's exciting. Both suspensions have a one inch lift, and a new tire, a 33 inch Goodyear Duratrack. For the 2019 Ram, it all starts with the frame, and the frame has been fully redesigned. It has a little bit of a taller side rail, and this is an interesting part. This is an ATMM, basically a vibration module that can cancel out bad vibrations through the frame and help with a more comfortable ride. The overall ride of the current truck is, is good, and we've improved that ride primarily from some of our components in the front suspension, like our, uh, we've improved our roll stiffness 20%. How we accomplished that is we took our front sway bar, uh, stay bar, and we moved it 180 degrees rearward. As you can see, it's, it's almost behind the, uh, the rear tires. Um, that is a hollow tube, so we're always keeping, keeping weight in mind. Our lower control arms are aluminum, um, as of today, and then our upper control arms are composite. So that's a, that's a steel with nylon reinforcement. So it's a stronger front end than today. And what that does, it enables us to run our 22s on our 4x4 versions. Okay, and you also still have the air suspension. Have you improved yes. that? Yeah, so this is second generation air suspension. Um, so we've improved it. Once again, our ride is, has improved, not only from our air suspension, but also from our shocks, because we have FRD shocks, frequency response dampening shocks, and that's the best combination of ride handling and comfort uh, for, for a pickup truck. But once again, second generation air suspension has a full functionality off-road one at 1.2 inches increase, off-road two at two inches. We have aero mode, comes down six cents of an inch, and then exit and entry at uh, two inches drops. And that's also on your remote. Great feature for loading and unloading out of your cargo as well.
Uh, pricing is going to be a little bit later and uh, the um, uh, customers will be able to order uh, from the dealers uh, here starting next week and um, the truck will be on sale at the end of uh, Q1. That's really soon. Yes, right around the corner. Can't wait to get these uh, new trucks on the road and, and uh, add more uh, new customers to the Ram uh, family. I really want to try these trucks, especially the Rebel. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a blast. I would have to say the, the feature I like the most isn't really even a feature, it's a combination of systems that make this vehicle drive with an amazing level of comfort and confidence. So now you guys know a lot about this new Ram 1500, but there's still two things that we don't know. We do not know the fuel economy numbers, DPA ratings are not in yet. We also do not know the pricing for the new truck. But we do know that the truck is going to be on sale in first quarter of this year and you can start ordering them in January of 2018. And I really cannot wait to get this truck on the road because Rem is saying it's really comfortable, really luxurious, and it could tow a lot more. I want to put it to the test. Go back to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. And of course, lots more coverage from the 2018 Detroit Auto Show. Uh, do you want to do some like, softball questions? Just, you know, like what's your favorite part about the truck? Yeah. What feature do you like the most? Stuff like that? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I want to play hardball, though. Oh, you like hardball? <laughs> <laughs> Send them to me fast. Yeah. <laughs>